So let's talk about an important method of teaching how to count, known as saying 10. And this is based on some international comparisons. By the age of three, children in China and the U.S. have learned the names of the first 10 numbers. By the age of four, children in China can generally count to 100. Meanwhile, children in the U.S. are still struggling to learn to count to 20. And after two months of kindergarten, children in China can solve about three times as many basic arithmetic problems as children in the United States. Well, does this mean there's some ancient Chinese secret to mathematics or maybe some genetic predisposition to numeracy among those of Asian descent? Uh, because the same things or very similar things are also true of children in Japan, children in South Korea, and children in a number of other Asian countries. Well, most people who study this actually attribute the difference to the language, to the number of words that are used in Chinese versus the number of words that are used in English. And so for that, let's take a look at what those number of words are. And imagine that you're learning the language, which children are. And if you knew the first couple of number words, could you predict what the next number words are? What pattern is beneath the naming of the numbers. So in English, I have one, two, three as my first number words, and in Chinese, I have e, er, san. And on the basis of knowing that the first three words are e, er, san, can you predict what the next number word is going to be? Probably not. Um, the next few number words are going to be xi, wu, and again, if I know the first few numbers of words are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, can I predict what the next number word is going to be on the basis of these are what the first few are? And the answer is no, you really can't. There is no relationship between these words. Each must be learned as its own object. And this places a particular burden of memory on the, on the, on the child learning the word, number words. So again, I after many, many decades of practice, know what these words are in English, and after quite a bit of practice in Chinese, I have a vague recollection of what they are in Chinese as well. Now, what happens after 10, which the Chinese would call xi? Well, the first number after 10 is known as xi yi, and if you translate that, that's 10-1. And the number after that is xi er, 10, 2. And on the basis of these numbers after 10, immediately after 10, xi yi, then xi er, can you guess what the number after xi er is going to be? Well, if you guessed it was xi san, you're correct. And in fact, the numbers after that, xi xi, xi wu, xi li, xi ji, Xi ba, xi jie, and I'm not going to burden you anymore with my garbled Mandarin pronunciation. Uh, but the important thing here is that if you know how to count from 1 through 10 in Chinese, you also know how to count from the number after 10 to 10, 9, and to a number you might call 10, 10. So you know the next set of number words, and after we get to a number we might call xi xi, but let's try to be systematic about this. If I were to actually count in Chinese, the number of xi here, I would count yi, one, er, two. There's er, xi, present. And this is, in fact, the name of the number after 10, nine. It's actually called er, xi two tens. Now try the same thing in English. After 10, the number is 11, 12. And on the basis of these two, can you predict what the number after 12 is going to be? And unlike in Chinese, there's no way to predict that the number after 12 is going to be called 13. And even if you knew that, you couldn't predict the number after that. In English, the numbers after 10, which are called the teen numbers, follow no regular pattern. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute. Don't we have the numbers 16, 17, 18? Isn't this a nice regular pattern? Well, it is, except it's a nice regular pattern that emerges after a very irregular pattern. So we have to make the mental switch from words like 
11, 12, 13, all right, so 14. So now we start to add the teen to the numbers, but then at some point we switch over to using our old number words. So there's a bunch of irregularities that lead up to this somewhat regular pattern here. And then once we get there, there's a problem because we've run into what are called the decade names. So in Chinese, the number after 10, 9 is two tens. And this is what we call 20 in English. And the tens in English and in other languages are their own set of number words that we call the decade name. Now, how do we count after this? Well, after two tens, we have er, she, e, two tens, one, two tens, two, two tens, three, and so on all the way up to two tens, nine. And then after that, as with the number following 10, 9, we might call it 2 tens, 10, but that's just san, shi, 3 tens. And so we begin our decade names 2 tens, 3 tens, 4 tens, and so on all the way up to 10, 9 tens. Now let's see what happens. So in English, the number after 19, again, what we might, you know, we might say that that's analogous to 10, 9. Well, again, I could think about that as 10, 10, which becomes two tens. Well, I don't call it 10, teen, of course, but I call it 20. And I introduce a completely new naming convention at this point. So now I have 20. And then my remaining decade numbers are 30, 40, 50, and so on up to 90. And again, there's not any regular pattern. Well, again, what we actually have is something that's even worse than no regular pattern. We have a pattern that exists, but that is irregularly applied. And even worse, a couple of features that happen here. Let's consider how I write the digits for the number 16. If I write 16, then the 6, which is the first thing I say, is the second digit that I write. On the other hand, for 60, the first thing that I say is the first thing that I write. So here we have another irregular pattern that's applied on top of the irregularity of the number words. Even worse, suppose I take a number name like 67. Well, if I listen to what I'm saying here, it sounds like I should be writing that as 67. And this type of mistake is so common, it has its own name. It's called a concatenation error. There's a small consolation for us. English is, for once, not the most irregular of languages. There are some languages that are even more irregular in their naming convention than English is. Well, what can we do about this? Well, one thing we might do is we might teach kids to count in Chinese. Probably a valuable skill. Certainly learning another language is always useful. Uh, but in this case, it's probably impractical to do so. The other thing we can do is to try to count the same way, but this time using standard English. And this leads to what's called the saying 10 method of counting. And so how are we going to count? Well, we'll start off as we do in Chinese. We'll have our number words for the numbers from 1 through 10. After 10, the number after that is going to be called 10-1. Now, more naturally, logically, and sensibly, we might call this 10 and 1, but this is deemed grammatically incorrect. The English teachers tell us that we don't use the word and when describing whole numbers. So rather than saying 10 and 1, which is what all of us want to say, we're going to drop the and and call it 10, 1. And then after that, we'll have 10, 2, 10, 3, 10, 4, and so on up to 10, 9. Then two tens. And again, the non-grammatical form 10 and 10 would lead very naturally to two tens. Again, not considered grammatically correct. Um, but then after that, two tens, one, two tens, two, and so on up to three tens, then four tens, five tens, and so on up to nine tens, at which point we introduce our next number word, the hundreds. And at that point, our naming convention becomes a lot more regular.